5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Monday, November 2, 2020. Fox report. Kyle Rittenhouse's cash bail is set at $2 million. A Wisconsin court set bail at $2 million for Kyle Rittenhouse, who is charged in connection with three shootings during protests in August, after he was extradited from his home state of Illinois. The 17-year-old, of Antioch, ill, is accused of fatally shooting two white men, Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber, and injuring Gage Grosskreutz in Kenosha, Wiss. On August 25, the protest erupted after a police shooting that paralyzed a black man named Jacob Blake. Deutsche Well report. Austria terror attack, multiple casualties after shooting near Vienna synagogue. Police in the Austrian capital, Vienna said on Monday they had launched a major operation in the city center after reports of a shooting near a synagogue. In a tweet, Vienna's police department said there had been shots fired in central Vienna, with multiple people being injured. Interior Minister Karl Niehammer said that the shootings appeared to be a terror attack. He told public broadcaster Orff that several people had been injured and probably some killed. BBC report. Ethiopia. Gunmen kill at least 32 people in Oromia state. Local authorities said the rebel Oromo Liberation Army Ola was to blame for the attack in Oromia state. Residents said dozens were rounded up and killed and livestock was stolen. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed suggested the attacks may have been identity-based. Ethnic violence has increased since he took office in April 2018. The Ola is an armed group that has been blamed for kidnappings and bomb attacks in western and southern Ethiopia. CNN report. What will TV and social networks do if Trump prematurely declares victory? If President Trump comes out and prematurely claims victory on election night, what will television networks and social media websites do? The scenario, undemocratic and unthinkable in the past but a very real possibility with Trump seeking to stay in power, is causing media and tech executives to debate potential responses. For the major television networks, one question is paramount. Will they carry Trump live if he is giving a speech and making completely specious claims? BBC report. Grey Wolves, far-right group to be banned in France. The Grey Wolves, an international organization, is seen as allied to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The memorial was daubed with yellow graffiti over the weekend that included Mr. Erdogan's initials. It comes amid growing tensions between France and Turkey over a territorial dispute in Nagorno-Karabakh. Fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan erupted over the mountainous territory of Nagorno-Karabakh in September. BBC report. In pictures, Day of the Dead in COVID times. But with the number of coronavirus infections fast approaching 1 million and more than 91,000 people dead with COVID-19, this year's Day of the Dead has taken on a special poignancy. Public events have been cancelled and many of the traditional altars and ceremonies which have in the past drawn large crowds were closed to prevent the spread of the virus. Usually homemade, an altar is a space decorated with flowers, pictures of the deceased and other offerings such as the dead person's favorite food items and drinks. CNN report. First time voter. I needed to vote as if my life depended on it. Sushma Barakoti is the executive director of the Refugee Women's Network, RWN an Atlanta-based nonprofit serving refugees resettled in the state of Georgia, and founder of Sunav World, LLC, a social enterprise that works for socioeconomic empowerment of artists and artisans, especially women. The opinions expressed in this commentary are solely her own. View more opinion on CNN. 20 years ago, I came to the U.S. from the Himalayan country of Nepal to pursue my master's in social work. Fox Report Hurricane Ada rapidly intensities into major storm, will be Category 4 by landfall. An explosive Hurricane Ada rapidly intensified on Monday, becoming a major storm in a matter of hours while threatening to grow even stronger before making landfall. The National Hurricane Center, NHC, said that Ada is now a major hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour, making it a Category 3 storm continued strengthening as expected before it makes landfall along the northeastern coast of Nicaragua on Tuesday, the NHC said. CNN report. Trump takes last swipe at Affordable Care Act before Election Day. The Trump administration took another step to weaken the Affordable Care Act with Election Day looming, 
Approving Georgia's controversial request to make fundamental changes to its Obamacare exchange, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services on Sunday gave the state permission to stop using the federal exchange, healthcare.gov, for enrollment in the individual market and shift to a private sector Georgia access model, starting in 2023. Al Jazeera Report American Voter, Devin Jones U.S. President Donald Trump and his Democratic challenger Joe Biden are battling for the presidency in a sharply divided United States. Trump has been focusing on law and order. Biden has been trying to strike a conciliatory note. The Black Lives Matter movement and whether Trump will release his taxes are among the many issues Americans will consider when choosing their president. As the hotly contested election approaches, Al Jazeera has been speaking to voters across the U.S. asking nine questions to understand who they are supporting and why. Al Jazeera report. Puerto Rico cannot vote but could be important in U.S. election. In the days before the United States presidential election, Kemuel Delgado has been working hard to galvanize voters, even though he and his fellow Puerto Rican islanders are not able to vote themselves. Delgado, the first Puerto Rican Muslim to represent Precinct 029 Hatillo as electoral commissioner, has been urging Puerto Ricans to encourage their relatives and friends to vote on the U.S. mainland where Latinos are expected to be largest minority voting bloc in the November 3rd polls. Deutsche Well Report. Vatican clarifies Pope's comments on homosexual unions. The Vatican said comments by Pope Francis on civil union laws were taken out of context and did not actually mean a change in the Catholic Church's doctrine on the topic of homosexuals or support for same-sex marriage. The Pope made headlines when he said that homosexuals have a right to be in a family and that civil union laws covering homosexuals are needed. The remarks were part of a new documentary on his life, Francesco, which premiered at the Rome Film Festival on October 21. Fox Report. Gun battle at Kabul University kills at least 19, wounds 22. Kabul. Afghanistan, gunmen stormed Kabul University on Monday as it hosted a book fair attended by the Iranian ambassador to Afghanistan, sparking an hours-long gun battle and leaving at least 19 dead and 22 wounded at the war-torn country's largest school. The ministry's spokesman, Tariq Aryan, also said there were three attackers involved in the assault, all of whom were killed in the ensuing firefight. Deutsche Well report. Dutch subway train saved by giant whale sculpture. The driver of a metro train in the Netherlands escaped serious injury on Monday after his train overran the tracks, only to come to a halt atop a sculpture of a giant whale's tail. The train crashed through stop barriers at the final station of De Akers in Spijkenis, near the Dutch port city of Rotterdam. The accident occurred on a raised platform, 10 meters 30 feet off the ground, where the carriage could have easily plummeted into the water below. CNN report. Melania Trump slams Biden and Democrats in final solo campaign speech. First Lady Melania Trump gave her fourth solo campaign speech on Monday afternoon in Huntersville, North Carolina. Trump, who before last Tuesday had not appeared on the campaign trail for more than a year, slammed Democrats in remarks that touched on COVID-19, the military, and echoes of President Donald Trump's law and order messaging, when rioters and looters were burning our cities and wrecking small businesses that belong to hard-working families and bring jobs to our communities, where were the Democrats? Fox report. Not so, ideological, volunteer group warns of planned Antifa election violence, regardless of outcome. Local and federal law enforcement agencies around the country have had security plans drawn up for weeks in anticipation of any possible civil unrest that may be triggered by the results of the 2020 presidential election. Major cities, still reeling from a summer of relentless demonstrations and riots, are bolstering securities in their downtown areas as shops board up their windows. Security experts say that there are a legitimate concern and reason for cities to brace for brutality. Al Jazeera report. Texas federal judge thwarts Republican push to toss 127,000 votes. A federal judge in Texas on Monday denied an attempt by Republicans to throw out about 127,000 votes already cast in the United States presidential election at drive through voting sites in Houston, a Democratic-leaning area. The plaintiffs had accused Harris County clerk Chris Hollins, a Democrat, of acting illegally when he allowed drive through voting as an alternative during the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell.